Welcome to a video taking a look at arithmetic with mixed numbers. All that we mean by arithmetic is just simply multiplying, dividing, adding and subtracting and with mixed numbers that's what we're going to take a look at now. So to begin with let's take a look at this diagram here. I can see that I've got some kind of bars that have been coloured in. How much of this first bar has been coloured in? All of it has so I can say that that's one. I've got one bar that's been coloured in. How much of this bar has been coloured in? All of it has. So now, if I'm collecting these together, I've got two full bars that have been coloured in. Two whole bars that have been coloured in. How much of this bar has been coloured in? Well, only three parts out of four. So I could say that that is three quarters of the bar. So in total, how many of these bars have I got that are coloured in? Well, I could say that that is two whole ones have been coloured in and then three quarters of that last one. So I've got two and three quarters in total. Now, just thinking about this slightly differently, what I could think about is maybe, well, how many quarters have I got in total? I can see I've got three quarters here, but I could also say I've got a quarter here, a quarter, a quarter there, a quarter there, and so on. A quarter there, and as you can see I could carry on doing this but I won't. So how many quarters have I got here? Well I've got four in that first bar. How many in this bit? I've got another four so that takes me up to eight and then I've got three in this last one that takes me up to eleven. So how many quarters have I got? I could say that I have got eleven quarters and I could say that these two things are the same. So this here, two and three quarters, is exactly the same as eleven and a quarter. Now two and three quarters, this is what we call our mixed number. So that two and three quarters is a mixed number. It's a mix of whole numbers and fractions. Then eleven quarters, this is what we call our top heavy fraction. It's called a top heavy fraction because the number on the top of the fraction is larger than the number that is on the bottom of the fraction. So we can see there the number 11 is on the top and we've got 4 on the bottom. So 11 larger than 4, the top is heavier than the bottom part. Okay, now these are important for what we're trying to do today and we don't always need to think of it in terms of a diagram, there is a little shortcut that we can do. Let's take a look at that shortcut now. Basically, the shortcut is to take the denominator of the mixed number and multiply it by the whole number and add the numerator. And this will give me a shortcut to turning it into a top heavy fraction. So 2 and 5 sevenths, 7 multiplied by 2, so I'm just times in the denominator by the whole number and then adding on that number on top. So, 7 times 2 is 14, add on 5, that's going to give me 19, and I've got 19 sevenths. With the next one, 5 times 3, that gives me 15, add on 4, that gives me 19, and what have I got 19 of? 19 fifths. And then the last one, 3 multiplied by 1, add on 2, that gives me 5, and what have I got 5 of? I've got 5 thirds. Okay, now let's just do kind of the reverse process because so, it's really good to be able to go from mixed numbers to top heavy and then also back again. So 20, 21 fifths, how many fives fit into 21? Well, we could say that how many fives fit into 21? Four do. So we've got four whole ones and then we've got an extra one fifth on top of that. For 32 fifths, how many fives fit into 32? Well, I could say that 6, we've got 6 fives in 32, and then we've got 2 fifths on top of that. Lastly, how many 15s fit into 52? Well, I can say that there are 3 15s in 52, with 7 15ths left over. Okay, so we've just been practicing the skill to attempt. Um, adding and subtracting mixed numbers. It's an important skill to have in order to do this. So let's take a look at an example. Say I've got 2 and 2 sevenths 
plus uh, one and let's have one and one and a half so what I'm going to need to do here is the first thing I want to do is do exactly what we've just been practicing and turn each of these into top heavy fractions to begin with it just makes it easier for us to calculate with so 7 multiplied by 2 add on 2 that gives us 16 sevenths so I've got 16 sevenths and then here I've got 1 and 1 half or 2 times 1 add on 1 that gives me 3 halves now at this point I can't add these as they are I need the denominators to be the same can't just add them as they are, I need the denominators to be the same. So I need the numbers on the bottom to be the same. Now, the way that I work out what number needs to go on the bottom is I look for the lowest common multiple of my two denominators. So my lowest common multiple of the two denominators, which is the lowest number that is in the 7 times table and the 2 times table, that's going to give me 14. So the number that is going to go on the bottom of all of my fractions from now on is going to be a 14. Now, what's left, all that I now need to do is figure out, well, what did I multiply 7 by to reach 14? I multiplied it by 2. So whatever I've done to the bottom part of my fraction, I now need to do to the top part as well. So I need to times that by 2 as well. So 16 times 2, that's going to give me 32 fourteenths. Now all that I've done here is I've made what we call an equivalent fraction. 32 fourteenths is exactly the same as 16 sevenths. Now I need to do the same thing with 3 halves. What have I multiplied 2 by to reach 14? I've multiplied it by 7. So I now need to do exactly the same to my top number multiply this by 7 as well. So 3 multiplied by 7, that's going to give me 21. Well, I know that my number on the bottom stays the same the whole way through once I've worked out the lowest common multiple. So all that's left is to add these two numbers on top. So I've got 32 plus 21, that's going to give me an answer of 53 fourteenths. Now at this point, it's, it might be a nice idea to just say, OK, well, I've got this as a top heavy fraction, 53 fourteenths. Let's turn it back into a mixed number. We were given our question as a mixed number, so let's turn it back into one. So now our question is, how many 14s fit into 53? Well, I could say that 3 14s fit into 53, and I have a remainder of 11 fourteenths. So my final answer there would be 3 and 11 fourteenths. Okay, let's take a look at another example, this time involving uh, 2 and 2 fifths minus 1 and a half. Now I'm just going to change uh, 1 and a half, and we'll talk about why I'm going to change it, why I've decided to change it in a moment. And we're going to have 1 and 3 tenths instead. So we've got 2 and 2 fifths minus 1 and 3 tenths. So let's let's work our way through this. First things first, I'm going to do 5 times 2, add on 2 to give me 2 and 2 fifths as a top heavy fraction. So that gives me 12 fifths. And I'm subtracting 1 and 3 tenths. I'm going to call that instead, I'm going to call that 13. I'm going to call that 13 tenths. Now at this point, like we did last time, I'm now going to find the lowest common multiple of 5 and 10. So what is the lowest number? It's in the 5 times table, it's also in the 10 times table, and that is simply 10. So now at this point, I can make all of my bottom numbers equal to 10. So all my denominators from now on are going to be 10. I'm just going to fill that in now, save me a job a little bit later. Now the next thing to do, I need to figure out what has 5 been multiplied by to reach 10. Well 5 has simply been multiplied by 2. So that means that I need to do 
exactly the same to the top number and so that's going to give me 24 tenths 24 tenths we can see that's just exactly the same fraction as 12 fifths we're just using different numbers to represent it now 13 tenths what have I multiplied 10 by to reach 10 well I've just multiplied it by 1 it hasn't changed so that number on top doesn't have to change either so that becomes 13 okay so I've got 24 tenths minus 13 tenths all that's left for me to do is to subtract my numerators and that leaves me with 11 tenths now the last thing to do is simply to write this as a mixed number so 11 tenths how many tens fit into 11 1 with a remainder of 1 tenth and that would be my final answer now on to multiplying and dividing with fractions here I've got 2 and 1 third multiplied by 1 and 2 fifths so first up let's turn 2 and 1 third into a top heavy fraction 3 times 2 add on 1 that is going to give me an answer of 7 thirds and I'm multiplying that by 1 and 2 fifths 5 times 1 add on 2 7 fifths now multiplying fractions is much more straightforward than adding and subtracting all that I simply do is multiply the top numbers together 7 times 7 and multiply the bottom numbers together 3 times 5 so that gives me an answer of 7 times 7 49 over 3 times 5 15 then if I wanted to write that as a mixed number 15 is in at 49 go 3 with a remainder of 4 fifteenths so my final answer 3 and 4 fifteenths strangely fractions are quite weird like that multiplying and dividing is much easier with fractions than adding and subtracting so on to division with fractions I've got 1 and 3 sevenths divided by 2 and 4 fifths so like with all of these questions involving mixed numbers let's turn it into a top heavy fraction first 7 times 1 add on 3 that gives me 10 sevenths and I'm dividing that by 2 and 4 fifths 5 times 2 is 10 add on 4 14 fifths now from this point I just need to do one tiny little adjustment to make this into an easier sum so the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip second fraction upside down so I'm going to flip that second up fraction upside down so I get 10 sevenths that remains as it is I'm not doing anything to the first part and in fact just to represent no, the fact I'm not doing anything to the first part let's use let's keep it yellow so 10 sevenths stays as it is and then I am flipping the second fraction Okay. we can also call this flipping of the second fraction taking the reciprocal we've looked at reciprocals before so just when when we are flipping a fraction upside down we say that this is the reciprocal 5 fourteenths is the reciprocal of 14 fifths and vice versa now when we have flipped it upside down we then have to change the division sign to a multiply so we are flipping and then changing flip then change so flip the second fraction change from a divide to a times now it becomes a really easy sum to figure out just like we did earlier we're going to do 10 times 5 which is going to give us 50 and then we're going to do 7 times 14 7 times 14 that's going to give us um, 98 so what I'm left with is is that right? Yeah, yeah. Seven times forty, ninety-eight. Um, what I'm left with is fifty over ninety-eight. I can then, if I want to, I can cancel this down. So I can cancel this down to. Um, I can cancel this down to twenty-five. Forty-eights. Uh, sorry, forty-nines. Twenty-five forty-ninths. Okay. So 25 49ths, it would be our final answer there.
So key message here, if we'd ever asked to divide, simply flip the second fraction upside down, that changes it from a divide into a multiplication sum. Okay, now it's your turn. If you pause the video now and get a, grab a, some paper and attempt these four questions, attempt these four questions, uh, when you have answered them, press play to see the answers. So those answers are coming up now. So tick them if you got them right. 